Hey everyone, welcome back to Next Gen Science. Today, we're exploring an epic 2015 adventure drama sci-fi film called The Martian. Before we dive into the plot, I hope you're all having an amazing day. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into the story. Four astronauts collect rock samples from Mars outside of their ship. Their colleagues inside warn them that there is a storm coming, one much worse than they had previously thought. They are advised to come inside. The crew debates whether or not they should try to wait out the storm or take off. Most want to risk it and stay, but the commander uses her authority to settle the matter. They will be leaving. While getting ready to take off, some debris thrown around by the storm damages the ship and they attempt to repair it. As they struggle to solve the problem and make it back inside, Mark, one of the crew, is hit by some debris and sent flying away from the rest. The debris damages his communication systems and the rest of the team isn't able to get a hold of him. The storm gets progressively worse and the crew inside warns that the ship won't be able to withstand the wind much longer, that they need to leave soon. The commander sends her crew back inside, but stays behind to try to look for Mark. She does her best, but is forced to come back inside as she wants to save the rest of her team. The crew mourns the loss of their friend as they depart from Mars. The director of NASA holds a press conference letting the nation know that their mission to Mars was a success, that the team is on their way back home, but unfortunately one of the astronauts died. Mark wakes up, still on Mars, half buried in the sand, his suit signaling all kinds of warnings about his oxygen levels and blood pressure. He stands up and finds that he's been impaled by some debris. He cuts the excess off but leaves the metal rod in so that he can keep the air pressure stable inside his suit. He makes his way back to the base, goes inside, and surgically removes the debris from his abdomen and staples the wound back together. Mark turns on a video log and recounts what has happened to him for the record, explaining that the debris turned off his communication systems, but also kept his suit sealed. He makes it clear that he doesn't blame his crew for leaving him behind, that they had every reason to assume that he was dead. He realizes it will be at least four years before NASA will be able to get another manned mission to Mars and that he will run out of food long before then. He walks around looking at the things his crew left behind and puts some of their belongings away. He goes through the stores of the base and makes a detailed log of how much food he has left, he realizes he only has enough food to last him a year, and that he'll need to find a way to grow three more years worth of food. Luckily, Mark is a botanist, and he takes some potatoes the crew had brought with them to eat for Thanksgiving and decides to figure out a way to plant them. He gets to work cleaning off the solar panels, bringing loads of dirt inside and spreading it around, and he even goes through the crew's waste to make fertilizer. He tills the dirt inside and plants the potatoes. He realizes he does not have enough water with him to be able to water all of the crops as much as he needs to, so he sets to work figuring out a way to make more water. He rigs up a machine that creates water through small chemical fires, and after a few days, the inside walls of the garden are covered in condensation and the plants begin to sprout. Back on Earth, NASA has a funeral for Mark. Vincent talks to the director about returning to Mars and collecting the equipment Mark's crew abandoned, but the director shoots it down saying that everything they do would have to be televised and he doesn't want the public seeing Mark's body, that they have to wait. Vincent points out that Mark's body will never decompose on Mars, and that they could frame the mission to look like they were going back to Mars to recover Mark's body for his family. Mindy, a satellite supervisor, receives coordinates directing her attention to Mark's location and she notices the movement at the base. She quickly places an emergency call to the director to notify him. They realize that this footage is proof that Mark is still alive, and they try to figure out what they're going to tell the public, since they have to release this footage within 24 hours. They're worried that NASA will receive flack for abandoning one of their astronauts. They decide to hold a press conference to let the public know that they will do everything within their power to bring Mark back home alive. On Mars, Mark studies maps at the base and figures out where he needs to be in order to meet the next Mars mission in four years. It is about 3,200 kilometers away, and his rover only travels 35 kilometers at a time. Additionally, it will take around 50 days for him to get to the destination from the base. He sets to work making adjustments to the rover so that it will travel farther without having to be brought back to the base to be recharged. He's successful in doubling the battery life, but in order to achieve this, he has to turn the heating in the rover off. Because it's so cold, he won't be able to survive the trip without heat, so he decides to dig up some radioactive material to keep in the back to keep him warm. NASA holds another press conference, letting the public know that by tracking him on their satellites, they have figured out Mark's goal, to meet the next Mars mission when they get there. They've expedited the estimated completion time to nine months instead of four years in hopes of getting to Mark before anything bad happens to him. 
They decide not to tell Mark's crew that he's still alive because they don't want to distract them while they're still trying to make their way home. Mark harvests 400 potatoes from his garden, planting the smaller ones and setting aside the larger ones to eat later. He is able to locate the Pathfinder, a rover that was lost on Mars several years ago, and he uses it to communicate with NASA using the replica they have back on Earth. The only thing NASA is really able to do with it is move the camera around, but Mark sets up a communication system using hexadecimals so that he can ask more than just yes or no questions. NASA uses the Pathfinder to give Mark instructions on how to hack into the rover to communicate with NASA through the Pathfinder. Vincent tells Mark about their plan to rescue him and Mark is relieved. Mark wants to know how his crew reacted when they found out he was still alive, but Vincent has to admit to him that his crew still doesn't know. Mark is furious that NASA has kept his team in the dark and Vincent realizes they have to tell the crew. When Mark's crew goes to receive their mail, they get communications from NASA telling them that Mark is still alive and that they plan on trying to save him. Mark does the math and with all of the food left over on the base in addition to all of the potatoes he has grown, he has just enough food to last until NASA is able to send another ship to come get him, as long as nothing goes wrong. While Mark is tending to his garden, the entrance chamber explodes, injuring him and leaving his helmet cracked. He quickly seals it with duct tape to replenish his oxygen. He goes back to his garden to find that the exposure of Mars' atmosphere killed all of his plants and destroyed the system he had set up for keeping them watered. Mark tells NASA about the accident and they realize that if they don't speed up the timeline for getting to Mark, he won't have enough food to last him until they get there. Mark's old crew is granted permission from NASA to contact him and they catch up, heckling each other. Mark cleans up the area of the base he had reserved for growing his potatoes, taking out all the tarp and dirt and resealing the hole where the hatch had been. NASA decides to skip inspections on the ship they plan to use to rescue Mark, reasoning that there probably isn't anything wrong with it and the inspection would take up an unnecessary amount of time. On launch, the ship explodes, all of their hard work going up in flames. China Space Division watches the newscast about NASA's failed launch and offer their aid. With the help of Rich, a physicist, NASA is able to come up with a better plan to rescue Mark in less time. The Hermes, the ship that Mark's crew is on, will swing back into Earth's orbit long enough to be sent a fresh supply of food, then shoot back into space to pick up Mark without landing. The only problem with the plan is that it will add 500 days to the Hermes travel time. NASA's director vetoes the plan, explaining that he doesn't want to risk the lives of everyone on board the Hermes to save Mark. Another NASA coordinator thinks this is unfair and sends the plan details to the Hermes in secret. Mark's crew discusses the plan amongst themselves, realizing that if they follow through with it, they will be committing mutiny. They discuss whether or not they want to spend another 500 days in space away from their families, but ultimately decide it's the right thing to do. They take a unanimous vote to go back for Mark. Each of the crew members contacts their families to let them know they will be gone longer than they had originally planned. NASA is notified that the Hermes has gone off its plotted course, and the director scolds the other coordinator for secretly sending out the plans to the crew. In order for the plan to work, Mark has to figure out how to gather up all the equipment keeping him alive, the machines providing him with heat and oxygen, and get them to the ship in time to meet up with the Hermes as they pass Mars. The Hermes swings by Earth and picks up supplies and uses the gravitational pull of Earth's atmosphere as momentum to launch them back towards Mars without using as much fuel. After seven months, Mark begins preparing to meet the Hermes. He gathers all of his supplies and packs them into the rover. He takes the solar panels with him so he can recharge the rover occasionally without having to come back to the base. NASA reasons that Mark's ship will have to be going really fast to meet up with the Hermes, so they instruct Mark to remove all of the equipment that is now unnecessary. He takes out all of the supplies meant for a six-person crew and leaves only enough for the one-person trip. He is also instructed to take off the front and sides of the ship and replace them with tarp to reduce the weight, and to remove all of the control panels since the Hermes will be operating his ship remotely. Mark leaves the rover for the last time and enters the ship to get ready. He shaves off the beard he's grown, puts on new clothes and a spacesuit, and awaits instruction from his crew. They reassure him and warn him that he might pass out because of the force of the launch. Mark's ship takes off and the tarps get sucked into space almost immediately. Mark passes out and is unable to communicate with his crew to let them know that he is okay. Mark wakes up, and his crew informs him that they won't be able to get their ship close enough to Mark's. The commander instructs one of the crew members to construct an explosive and rig it to the back of the ship to slow them down so they have a better chance of reaching Mark. They set off the bomb and are inside of Mark's ship, but not close enough to reach him. The commander puts on a space suit, straps herself into a chair on the outside of the ship, tethers it with a length of rope, and makes her way towards Mark. 
Unfortunately, the cable isn't long enough, so Mark cuts a hole in his suit and uses the air pressure to guide him to the commander. She catches him, reels him in, and they go back inside to reunite with the rest of the crew. They let NASA know they have Mark and are on their way home. Back on Earth several years later, Mark is teaching NASA initiates about safety and preparedness in space. The Ares 4 launches, and the crew members of the Hermes watch the launch on the television with their loved ones. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.